So one of the things I noticed is it's been sitting for five months. This is the original fuel switch or also known as a petcock. And you see there, it's leaking. The last thing you want is race fuel, you know, <laughs> dripping down on your built 365 motor because that's instant chaos. So I gotta get a new one of these. All right, okay, welcome back you guys. It is October 2nd and it is about 11.30 in the afternoon. And um, the day has finally come where if everything goes smoothly today, this bike will be totally complete after buying it. I think it was October 2018 and slowly riding it and getting a feel for it and deciding if I wanted to dump money into it. And remember, I bought it because it was 2000 bucks with a plate and it came from a guy who was super meticulous, even though the bike was roached from being ridden a ton. So you know everything we've done to it. You've seen the videos. What are the last things I need to do? Number one, I've been looking for green, all green plastic since I got it. And every now and then I would find one. I found a fender, which was pretty easy. And then I found the side panels. Everybody had these in white, but finding them in green was really tough. I finally found these like, you know, six months ago, you saw in that video. But the hardest thing to find were radiator shrouds that were not white because this bike came stock with white shrouds. I wanted to go all green. I just love the full color of a bike. When Honda and everybody back in the mid 2000s were doing uh, re white rear fenders, it literally drove me nuts. I mean, I could barely watch my favorite sport. I just was like, why can't we just get a red Honda, not a white fender? Drove me crazy. So I swapped out all my white fenders over the years with all my bikes for the right color. So finally, after looking for two and a half years, I found one green shroud in Japan. So I got it. Here's a picture of the decal that was on it, the stock decal. This decal I didn't prefer. It looked a little cartoony to me. It was pink in the middle. Um, but I found one and I bought it. And I'm like, what are the chances I'm gonna find another one? It's been two and a half years and it took me to find this one, right? So I had actually ordered a couple, couple aftermarket sets and here's a picture of this aftermarket set that they sell on eBay and Amazon and they don't fit the KLX. They kept telling me they fit, they fit, and they don't fit. So I even cut them to try to make them fit. I just threw them out. I was so frustrated. So I did discover something now though that I'm dealing with these and I'll tell you in a second. Sure enough, uh, just a few months later in the UK, there was another green radiator shroud. That's the one you see over there on the bike right now. So I bought that one and then I had a set. I think the one in the UK was like 80 bucks plus shipping, but I, I had to have the thing. So they don't make them anymore. They don't make plastics for this bike. Aftermarket, OEM, nothing. So I pieced together all those plastics and then I sent these plastics off, off to Decal Works. And I was so nervous. I told them, look, it's taken me two and a half years to find these please take care of these. And I'm sure they deal with the public every day. I'm just another one of those guys, but 
I didn't want them to lose them, so I insured them for $500 when I sent them. So they did a great job. They worked with me on the design. I wanted to use this decal, the one from the UK, that was the OEM one over there, but I wanted to add red in the KLX, not pink to black, and they did the red. And then I wanted to add a little 365 label on there just to make it a little ultra trick right there. So they did that. And um, it was 124 bucks, all custom, all done. I had them put them on, so there's no bubbles. I've done decals for 40 years, and a heat gun works really well. A little bit of soap solution back there can work really well. But it's tedious, and I just wanted to get them and put them on. So here, here they are. They arrived. And here's the first one on the bike. I could not be more thrilled with the black to red, the little 365 decal right there. It just looks so great, so I'm wondering if I should have added some red to that swing arm sticker. I might come back to that swing arm sticker for a fourth try. That's the third version. So that's what we are finally done now with getting all the plastics. Today I'm going to put these plastics on. Now I did discover that when I went to mount these, you see this gap right here? I do, I'm just going to use a longer bolt and the seat covers this so it looks sano. But now I see why those aftermarket ones weren't fitting um, from eBay and stuff. If you look at this picture, these white side covers have a deeper bolt socket than the stock ones. So it's the tank is the problem. This is an aftermarket high volume tank, which is great. I can go like 150 miles on it. And I, the only one they make now, if I wanted to replace this, is the lame one where the fuel comes down into the shrouds and it's like three inches thick and it looks stupid. So I'm gonna take care of this tank. If I ever break this tank, I'm gonna have it professionally fixed because this is the last one that I've been able, I've looked for tanks for these years just to see if I could find a stalker just to have a backup. I cannot even find one. I may find one eventually, right? Because used stuff comes up all the time. So it leads me to my next question. Today we're gonna to replace the, the fuel switch because I noticed when I test rode this in the last video, when I went to turn it off, there was fuel all around here. So they do end up leaking over time. Uh, the little steel parts that seal in there, they leak through here. We're gonna replace that today. We're gonna put the stock plastics back on. I'm also gonna drain the coolant and install new hoses and just go through every nut and bolt and it'll be done today. This battery subsequently is here just for me to test this. <laughs> So I also bought one of these like metric bolt kits you can buy for like 20 bucks. And I'm replacing out all these roached little eight millimeter and 10 millimeter bolts where the threads are just starting to be so thin with brand new nice and thick ones. So another cool thing is that when um, Jerry Layton did the motor, he put these rubber grommets in here on top of these valve cover bolts because these valve cover bolts were touching the bottom of the gas tank. And of course that could lead to something catastrophic. So what a cool dude, man. He put these rubber grommets in here. He told me he did that and then I just now found them when I took off the gas tank. Pretty cool.
All right, so you can see that the, uh, the fuel back to the bike comes out on the left side here, but on the new one, it comes out on the right. Now what that does for me is it allows me to shorten that supply line because it was on the left, this hose had to come back down and around like this, but now I can, I can hack the hose there and come in and it'll just dump straight into that carburetor and um, it'll just make it a little more sano.
So if you're wondering why I don't repaint the frame, which I could, I actually have the paint. You know, this side would need it more than the other side, if you just saw. Like I said, I actually have the paint here. It's, it's called Kawasaki 3495 694 Jet Ski Violet is the name of that paint. It took me a little bit to find it. I've got two cans of it. But the frame's not that bad. You know, it's super clean. So if I paint it, I'm just going to rub it off of there again, you know, the minute I ride it. So that's why I haven't painted the frame. What am I doing with the old parts? Well, the stalker rim and tire I'm going to keep. You know what I went through to try to make a couple hubs work from a different motorcycle. So I just figure, I don't know, if I keep this thing and I roach these wheels, I've got a set of hubs here that I know fit. I could send these hubs in and have wheels built again if I really need to. So I'm saving this stock set. Anything that's a value that's hard to replace, like the headlight, I'm keeping the headlight, the stock fork guards, keeping those, the original white plastics, keeping those. I've got a brand new rear fender here, white and green, uh, side panels. I'm keeping all that stuff. You just never know. Right? You know how hard it was me, for me to find all this other stuff. All right, so where does that leave us? The battery that I was using to test the light when I was putting the brand new light in is right there. And the battery that goes in this thing died over the winter, just sitting still. Put it on my charger for three days, just kept blinking, saying it couldn't charge it. So I have another battery coming. When that battery comes, I'll do a full ride report. I'll do some desert stuff, some trail stuff. I'll try to find a track, do some track riding with it and let you guys know how it handles, what the power's like, and all that stuff. The other thing I'm hoping happens is we get some rain so I can ride out here in the desert without any dust. I have some traction. It just makes for much better videography. With the purchase price, I have about 11 grand in it, but it's brand new from the bottom up, except for the frame and a couple parts. We got the big 34 millimeter carburetor. We have the 365 kit, suspension for my weight and my rideability level, brand new rims and tires, brand new chain and sprocket, brand new hub, brand new plastic. It should go for a long time. And it's a conversation piece. You know, it's different. You don't see this everywhere. And it's kind of cool. I like pulling up and people saying, hey, what is that thing? I have a lot of fun restoring stuff. And it's just the way it is. So hope you enjoyed all the videos. I'll do another one here when I go to ride this thing and give it a full test. And the last thing was, I looked for a light for this thing forever. You know, it makes it look like a modern bike, this dinosaur. So it got a facelift, some plastic surgery. And all I did was I used the stock mounts, just re-drilled this one hole. So it's held on with these rubber clamps, which is stock. It's held on with this plastic piece. It's on there pretty tight, so I don't think it's going anywhere. And man, what a difference. So, and also I, I was able to move it up and it allows a lot more air to get in here, work its way into the radiator. So pretty stoked about that light. All right, so I just weighed this thing, and um, even though the seat's not on it, that heavy battery's on it, and the battery weighs more than the seat. Uh, so I got I got 140.3 in the rear, 125.6 in the front, so it's 265.9 pounds uh, without the seat on it, and that's I think that's pretty good, man, for a street legal dirt bike. It's got a little bit of oomph to it now. 